His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Khudaybiyah Palace. The cabinet highlighted the strength of relations between Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates, the UAE, which continues to receive the support of both His Majesty the King and the President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. The cabinet commended the outcomes of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed's visit to Bahrain, which reflects the depth of the Bahrain UAE partnership. The cabinet further highlighted the importance of the discussions held by His Majesty the King and the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Bishal Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah. In this regard, the cabinet reviewed the outcomes of the successful visit made by uh, His Highness the Emir of Kuwait uh, to Bahrain and its importance in furthering the long standing partnership that benefits both countries and their people. Following the anniversary of the National Action Charter, the NAC, His Royal Highness took the opportunity to recognize the kingdom's wide ranging achievements that have been realized thanks to the joint efforts of Team Bahrain across all sectors and the protection of the kingdom's armed forces. The Crown Prince and Prime Minister expressed his honour in receiving His Majesty the King's royal assignment to chair the co committee responsible for adopting the NAC following its approval in 2001. This role facilitated the advancement of the kingdom's pioneering national initiatives and projects, aligning with the far-reaching visions of His Majesty the King and the aspirations of Bahraini citizens. His Royal Highness observed that the, uh, to, to capitalize on the attaining growth and prosperity, the Bahrain Economic Vision 2030 was introduced and launched in 2008. This initiative aimed to uh, delineate the, the kingdom's national aspirations in line with the principles of fairness, sustainability and competitiveness. His Royal Highness said uh, Prince Salman bin Hamad underscored the importance of the government's cooperation with the legislative authority to ensure ongoing development aligns with the, the envisioned goals facilitated by programs spanning across the old legislative terms. His Royal Highness directed to continue evaluating the progress made on the Bahrain Economic Vision 2030 goals and to pursue efforts to foster efforts to meet the goals of the vision. With six years remaining until completing the Bahrain Economic Vision 2030 goals, His Royal Highness acknowledged that the diversity's achievements accomplished thus far attributed to Team Bahrain's efforts guided by His Majesty the King's visions. In light of this, under His Majesty the King's directive to ensure providing the best for the present and future of Bahrain, His Royal Highness directed the commencement of consultations with the legislative authority private sector, professional institutions and civil society organizations to draft the Bahrain Economic Vision 2015. His Royal Highness said the Crown Prince and Prime Minister added that the new framework to be launched by year end should encapsulate visions that mirror the ambitions and aspirations of today's society. His Royal Highness underscored that the Bahrain Vision 2050 will be a starting point for the next phase of development, prosperity and advancements for the Kingdom of Bahrain as recognized as uh, the home of leadership and achievement and oasis of safety and coexistence for all. The cabinet extended its congratulations to Saudi Arabia on the anniversary of its founding day. The cabinet noted Saudi Arabia's diverse achievements under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and the support of Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. The cabinet congratulated the Emir, government and people of Kuwait on the occasion of its national day. The cabinet then lauded the progress and prosperity witnessed by Kuwait under the leadership of His Highness the Emir. The cabinet discussed several memorandums during the meeting approving the following. A memorandum regarding achievements attained thus far within the Economic Recovery Plan's priorities and the Bahrain Economic Vision 2030 report. A memorandum submitted by the Civil Service Council regarding the restructuring of several ministries and government entities to increase performance and efficiency. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for financial and economic affairs and physical balance regarding the uh, preliminary financial results for the 2023 fiscal year. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a draft resolution amending the decisions to establish the National Committee to Combat the Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs on the latest developments on the new program package launched by the Labour Fund, Timkin. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the government's response to three proposals and a law proposal submitted by the Council of Representatives. In addition, the Cabinet noted the following ministerial reports.
Bahrain's participation in the 60th Munich Security Conference. Outcomes of Bahrain's participation in the World Government Summit. Participation in the International Petroleum Technology Conference 2024. Outcomes of the Minister of Youth Affairs visit to the United Kingdom. Bahrain's participation in the Oman Innovation Festival 2024. Outcomes of Bahrain's participation in the third edition of the Arab Meeting for Young Leaders. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Representatives Council Speaker Ahmed bin Salman Al Salam and the Chairman of the Shura Council Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh and members of both councils at Ghadibia Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of the principles of the National Action Charter as a basis for the Kingdom's wide ranging national development and achievement led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness commended the ongoing collaboration between members of Team Bahrain within the executive and legislative authorities and institutions in the private sector and civil societies, noting that cooperation is the basis for achievement across all areas. His Royal Highness noted the wide-ranging national achievements announced at the Bahrain Economic Development Board meeting, which reaffirmed the importance of joint efforts during the next phase of development to benefit all. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister emphasized that Team Bahrain's ambitions are great and that its goals are limitless, affirming that joint efforts can yield desired goals and help overcome any challenges. His Royal Highness explained that all efforts should focus on striving to achieve the aspirations of Bahraini citizens as a national responsibility, adding that citizens' aspirations are the ultimate goal to shaping the present and future of the nation. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad recognized the knowledge and expertise of the kingdom's national workforce and its ability to assume the responsibilities of enhancing Bahrain's competitiveness, a feature that has advanced the kingdom's global position across various fields. His Royal Highness commended the efforts of the various sectors that were able to achieve the goals of the Bahrain Economic Vision 2030 and the Economic Recovery Plan, indicating the importance of ongoing evaluations of the achievements attained and the continuation of efforts to implement the vision's ultimate goals. His Royal Highness reiterated that the next phase of development requires the initiation of plans and strategies that ensure our economy continues to grow steadily to reach the desired goals. This follows His Royal Highness's directives announced at the Cabinet meeting to formulate Bahrain's Economic Vision 2050 and to ensure that the vision reflects the ambitions and aspirations of all faction of society to benefit all. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad stressed the importance of incorporating the needs of the legislative authority, the private sector and professional and civil society institutions in setting the future vision of Bahrain, adding that these factions will have a role in formulating Bahrain Economic Vision 2050, which must be completed and launched before the end of this year. His Royal Highness said the Crown Prince and Prime Minister highlighted the Bahraini economy's solid foundation as elements that must be utilized optimally to increase economic economic diversification through the contributions of non-oil sectors and through enhancing competitiveness and attracting global investments in priority sectors which will contribute to greater progress and development for the kingdom and its people. The Speaker, the Shura Council Chairman, Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry Chairman Samir Abdullah Nas and the heads of professional institutes expressed their pride in Team Bahrain's achievements and contributions to the kingdom's comprehensive development. They further affirmed their ongoing readiness to contribute to every initiative that will benefit the kingdom and its citizens. They concluded by noting His Royal Highness's commitment to involving the legislative authority, the private sector, professional associations and civil society institutions in formulating the Bahrain Economic Vision 2050 through the uh, consultations that will take place during the next phase of development. They added that the consultations will ensure a comprehensive overview of the kingdom's development needs that will benefit all factions of society. The Deputy Prime Minister, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, several ministers, the Chairman of Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Samir Abdullah Nas, and heads of professional institutes were present.
The World Health Organization held a regional training course in Bahrain on the issuance of the electronic polio surveillance system in the presence of the Minister of Health, Dr. Zeyl Hassan. The course aims to enhance the knowledge and develop the skills of national data managers related to polio and the national expanded immunization program in the participating countries. The course also highlights the issuance of an electronic polio surveillance system through an integrated training program that trains participants to monitor the disease, which will ensure early detection and analyze the risks caused by the virus. This is the first regional meeting to be hosted in Bahrain. Thanks a million uh, for Her Excellency the Minister and uh, for the Regional Director for the Eastern Mediterranean Region for their support and for inaugurating the training today. This training is bringing participants from nine countries to learn together, reflect together, and also uh, to give them the required skills and practices about the electronic polio system. Moreover, uh, we here want to acknowledge the strong health system in Bahrain and Bahrain being free of polio for more than 30 years. This program is about polio eradication and immunization and in polio eradication one of important component is whether we are we are having capacity to detect any polio virus if it comes and so that we do by doing AFP surveillance as well as surveillance in environment where we detect try to detect if there is a virus which is in sewage or other places. Now, any surveillance system is as good as the data system, the information which is going from there. So, uh, in this workshop, we are going to discuss about how to uh, make the surveillance data on a more real-time basis, more integrated basis. So, as you saw, the training name is Web IFA. So, Web is internet-based and IFA is information for action. So this Web IFA training is going to be a training of all these 10 country people, surveillance lab and data people on uh, this particular program. And after the training, we are going to roll out this Web IFA in these 10 countries. For remaining uh, 12 countries, this will be rolled out in the second phase, but within 2024 itself. The Minister of Tourism, Fatma Sleraf, he participated in the 8th GCC Tourism Minister's Meeting hosted by Qatar. As Sleraf, he noted the meeting's importance in exchanging experiences in developing the tourism industry at the GCC level, enhancing the contributions of the tourism sector in the GDP, strengthening joint marketing of the Gulf region and increasing its attractiveness and ability to provide more qualitative offers to tourists. She highlighted the achievements and initiatives of Bahrain in developing the tourism sectors and infrastructure she noted that Manama has been chosen as the capital of Gulf tourism for 2024 and affirmed that Bahrain completed its preparations to celebrate this occasion, calling on everyone to participate in these celebrations. She discussed a number of tourism achievements in Bahrain and noted the importance of promoting joint tourism marketing and exchanging experiences in the field of tourism resource management and developing innovative tourism production. The Minister of Finance and National Economy reviewed what has been achieved in terms of the priorities of the economic recovery plan during the Economic Development Board meeting and affirmed that the plan has been on track since its launch in 2021. More in this report. The Economic Recovery Plan is proceeding on the right path since its launch by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in 2021 and implementation of the directives of His Majesty the King. The numbers revealed by His Royal Highness during his chairmanship of the Economic Development Board meeting affirm the achievements made as part of the plan. The priority for facilitating commercial procedures and increasing their effectiveness within the Economic Recovery Plan included seven programs, which are the launch of the Sigillat system, the launch of the Binayat system, the program to modernize laws and legislation, the launch of the Government Land Investment Platform, which identifies the lands available for investment and the type of investment required the introduction of the Golden Residency Visa to attract investors and talents, facilitating the movement of passengers and goods, documenting more than 1,300 government services, and re-engineering more than 650 services to make it easier for citizens, residents, and investors to know government procedures. As a result of these programs, the value of investments reached more than 2.8 billion U.S. dollars, exceeding the priority goal of facilitating commercial procedures and increasing its effectiveness within the Economic Recovery Plan by attracting investments worth more than 2.5 billion U.S. dollars by 2023. These numbers are a reflection of the efforts made to advance Bahrain in all fields and make it a destination for investments and capital. 
Under the patronage of Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, the Bahrain Society for Children with Behavioral and Communication Difficulties announced the launch of the 6th International Autism Conference under the title Autism Codes. The conference aims to shed light on the treatment of autism spectrum disorders and other neurodevelopmental conditions and provide comprehensive strategies for managing medical and behavioral symptoms. Experts in the field of developmental and behavioral disorders will present a summary of the latest research results and the extent of therapeutic progress for those affected in addition to innovative practices in the fields of education and care. The conference will continue a number of exhibitions specialized in art and educational services and an exhibition on international goods and brands and the proceeds of which will go to support the efforts made by the society. This is Bahrain. I'm very honored to have been invited by Dr. Shekharania to participate in the upcoming conference regarding autism in our society. And I'd like to thank the Bahrain Society for um, behavioral and uh, communication difficulties for children. They have been doing a wonderful job all of these years focusing on supporting a section of our community that may sometimes be a little neglected. I'd like to say that the society is working just as this is Bahrain is working in support of the vision of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa. This is Bahrain are also pleased to be signing an MOU with the Bahrain Center for Children with Behavioral and Communication um, Difficulties uh, so that we can work ever closer and live in, in the shadow of His Majesty's vision where we live together as one family because this is Bahrain. Bahrain Polytechnic organized the first career day for the apprenticeship program. The event attracted more than 25 institutions and companies and around 800 students who were interested in joining various apprenticeship programs. During the event, the companies and institutions participating conducted job interviews for 300 candidates who met the application requirements. Bahrain Polytechnic launched the apprenticeship program in collaboration with the Ministry of Labor and the Labor Fund, Temkin, and five demanding specializations in the labor market vehicle welding, electrical, plumbing, and HVAC. The apprenticeship programs integrate study and work at the same time, allowing institutions to benefit from the growth and development of the apprentice during the program. This makes uh, the apprentice a productive and effective element in the workplace. In addition, the tuition fees for the apprenticeship program will be 100% supported, and the apprentice will receive a subsidized salary from the Labor Fund Timkin at a rate of 50%.